the capture by Russian forces of a Ukrainian stronghold about 10 miles northwest of Donetsk could mean relief for the first time in a decade for the people in that city and a further shift towards Russia in the strategic situation on the ground in the war between Moscow and Kiev. For more on that, we go to Moscow to speak with analyst Mark Sloboda. Mark, help us understand what we're looking at. Okay, so um, over the last week, uh, uh, starting Friday over the weekend, um, the small city of Avdeevka uh, in uh, South Donetsk, just nine miles from Donetsk City, uh, has been liberated or fallen, uh, depending on whether you have the perspective of the locals or the perspective of, of the Kiev regime and its U.S. government backers. Um, but uh, this was at the end of an intense four-month siege of the city, uh, but uh, starting in October by Russian forces. But... Um, in larger picture, the city has actually been uh, – conflict has been occurring in and around the city for a decade, uh, since 2014-2015 when the uh, U.S.-backed uh, Kiev Putsch regime seized power. 2014-2015 saw fighting over the city between uh, the local militias uh, of the Donbass. Uh, and Kiev regime forces, but in 2015, the Kiev regime forces came out on top. They have strongly, they strongly fortified that city over a decade, right? Well, just a decade. Um, the uh, they built uh, concrete fortifications, bunkers, pillboxes, layers of minefields, um, every building in the city was turned into a little mini fortress uh, and firing point. There was an extensive network of underground tunnels and bunkers uh, from the Soviet area that were expanded. Uh, it was regarded as not only the strongest of uh, the Kiev regime's fortress cities, but Western military analysts uh, referred to it as the most heavily fortified position on Earth. Clarify something for me. I'm looking at a map of that part of Ukraine. And so I see it on the south, you know, along the shoreline Mariupol, which is in the control mm -hmm. of Russia. I see off to the west by the river the Dnieper Zaporozhnia, which is where the mm -hmm. nuclear power plant is, and that's in control of Russia. I see Donetsk, which is, as you said, it's like nine miles or, or, or something. Yes. Like, that's the main city that this is next to. But it seems that the bulk of this area around it is in control of Russia. So is that true? Does Russia just control the cities and the Kiev, the countryside, or does Russia control pretty much that whole area? And this is a holdout. That's my question, I guess. Well, this is a salient here. This is long been a salient and let me interrupt you for a minute just for our audience a salient in military terminology is something where you occupy this piece and you're surrounded on multiple sides by the enemy it's like a projection this has long been a salient and uh there has been conflict here right local forces have have been trying to take this city in fact uh, even with Russian forces um, uh, taking the city over the weekend, actually the majority, a large portion of the fighting uh, on the ground uh, was done by uh, regiments from the Donetsk, from 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 the Donbass. Uh, so, and they've been fighting in the area for a long time. The Kiev regime built this up as a fortress city, as as uh, a Western uh, journalist referred to it uh, a couple of years ago, as a knife or a dagger pointed at the heart of Donetsk city. Gotcha. Uh, of the DNR. Um, uh, you could also uh, say, take a look at it as a Banderite fascist neo-Nazi jackboot on the neck of Donetsk. And it is from Avdevka and a, um, uh, a spread of villages just behind that have been shielded by it that the Kiev regime has shelled uh, Don Donetsk city primarily the residential areas of the city for the last decade, right? Uh, artillery shells, multiple launch rocket systems, cluster munitions, scattering pedal mines over the city. This was a daily affair, a, a decade of terror, 
because these strikes were invariably against civilian targets. There was a belief in Kiev that the people of East Ukraine chose wrong. They should have accepted the overthrow of the government that the people of East Ukraine had elected, uh, and they view them as uh, traitors, as uh, a large number of ethnic Russians. Uh, all the rest are Russian-speaking, Russian-leaning, uh, mixed Ukrainian Russians. You know, it's hard to differentiate uh, uh, exactly what is Russian and Ukrainian there in East Ukraine, uh, but um, it has been a, a daily source of carnage. And and even, it has to be said, even after Avdeevka has been freed, Russia will still need to push uh, further uh, a few, uh, at least a few more villages past in order to completely stop uh, the shelling. And just uh, yesterday, uh, a U.S. Um, uh, provided and U.S. targeted high Mars system again launched uh, munitions uh, into the residential areas of Donetsk city and killed yes. a number of civilians and damaged buildings. Who has control of Kramatorsk? Kramatorsk, that is the Kiev regime. That is the last big fortified line, which is will be up, shall we say, Russia will most likely be moving on this summer. Uh, it is the Kramatorsk, Slavyansk, Konstantinovka line. And that is very significant because it is in Slavyansk and Kramatorsk that the uprising in East Ukraine began. against the Kiev regime began. Right. right? They were, it, this was seized in 2014, right, uh, from the DNR. That was, but that was first invaded and, and seized. Yes. Yeah, that, that is where it all began. Um, and um, this was uh, a very significant battle that began hard fought and from the Russian side became progressively less as time went on and it was it got a foothold in the city, broke past the first chain of defenses in the suburbs and then was able to bring its firepower uh, advantages to bear. Um, and I would say that there are really principal five reasons why it fell and it, it collapsed, right? Russian forces had probably just over 10% of the city and Kiev regime forces collapsed and there was a complete rout. I mean, it was a rout. Right. Um, yeah. Kiev regime uh, forces were throwing down their weapons, abandoning their positions and running. Uh, the supply lines in and out of the city had been cut, so they were escaping in muddy fields on foot uh, in small groups to avoid being targeted or try to avoid being targeted by artillery and drones. And this started two full days before the Kiev regime's military announced a withdrawal, which means that they were just trying PR-wise to, to give the impression that they were still in control and that this was not an orderly ordered withdrawal. This was a rout. They left uh, a bunch of people behind, too. Uh, up to a thousand, possibly yeah, uh, slightly probably. more than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a number of those will have been injured that they were unable to evacuate. Others surrendered. Uh, and probably several thousand were killed trying to escape. Big picture. What does this mean, big picture? Big picture, it means that Russia will be able now to push past it, and within a couple months, probably, the shelling of Donetsk City will be brought to an end, uh, except possibly, again, for use of high Mars, which they'll have to be pushed back uh, further. Uh, but it will stop some of the terror. It will also allow a new logistics node, uh, railroad and, and highways uh, in the south, uh, opening up Russia's uh, strategic possibilities there. It, it will lead to the collapse of the Kiev regime's positions all over South Tudyets region within half a year. Uh, and it will mean that Russia will move on the final defensive line to free the Donbass this summer. Uh, probably by the end of the year, the Donbass will be completely freed. But the there are also political repercussions because of the route, the way things uh, were lost, uh, and uh, the blame game that is going on in Kiev. The political repercussions in Kiev could create further instability between the political branch of the regime and the military. And Washington and Brussels and London, too. Mark, thanks for your time. We'll speak with you again next week. Thanks for having me. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.